So you wanna make a swap. Awesome. Lots of people love to swap motors and for good reason. There's lots of cool things and it's kind of a way that us motorheads like to express our creativity. The first problem you're going to encounter is making motor mounts. Today we're gonna to look at making some custom motor mounts for an LS engine. So we got ourselves an LS4, front wheel drive edition. And we're gonna make it, well, rear wheel drive. Something special about these is they have a slightly different engine bolt location for the motor mounts. I think it has to do with the front wheel drive transmission that was typically bolted to this. So we gotta make ourselves some motor mounts. This is going to give you the template, the basis, for making motor mounts for anything. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find some energy suspension bushings, my favorite. Uh, today, we are using, uh, the part number's rubbed off, sorry, I can't see it, but that's a random size. Typically, this is the one you're gonna want. You're gonna want this one. It is 9.9483G. G is black, R is red, doesn't matter. That'll fit with an inch and a half diameter, that one I just said. The one I'm using today is kind of an oddball size. As I was saying, the size of your bushing is gonna determine the size of pipe you need. So, you want a pipe that the energy suspension bushing has like a 1,000th interference fit. So you gotta use the grease to fit it in there. That's what we got here. I've just finished deburring this with a file and I've cut it to have the right length from the inside to the inside of the other bushing. So it's gonna fit from here to here with about a 16th of an inch gap in the middle just for a little grease and play. That's gonna give my eyelet the right width. It's gonna be three inches total on the outside. We're going to use this as part of our, when we weld the motor mount together. Today the C in CAD is gonna stand for cardboard because this is way quicker than computers. Now, eventually this is gonna go here. So we got our plates made. Now we're gonna start working on making this fit to here. We're gonna make some tabs that are welded to this plate on either side and it's going to have a half inch bolt hole in it that's gonna accept our inner sleeve. And then at some point, we're gonna end up welding a piece of square tubing onto the outer sleeve that's gonna go down to our uh, you know, frame rail. Something important to note, just like on a suspension, you wanna avoid having bushing bind or over constraining your suspension. And this can happen on your motor mounts if you don't have the motor mounts in the right location. You want your motor mounts the center of your motor mount bolt hole, the horizontal bolt that connects the motor to the K-member, that bolt on both sides, you want it in line with the center line of your crankshaft. If you think about it, if the bolt holes for the motor mounts are above the center line of the crankshaft, it's kind of like the whole engine is on a cradle because those bolt holes, that's the pivot point for where the motor is going to rock back and forth. So if you have those bolt holes above the center line of the crankshaft, it's like it's on a swing set and it'll start binding and doing weird things. And if you have those bolt holes for the motor mounts below the center line of the crankshaft, now it's kind of like you're sitting on top of a bouncy ball and the ball wants to roll left and right. Neither of those are really desirable. If you have them all in a line, the drivetrain is gonna do what you expect it to do at that point. So keep it simple. On an LS engine, they make it easy for you. There's actually a casting rib on the side of the block that marks the center line of the crankshaft. So I got my tab marked out here. Just like that, I'm gonna drill a half inch hole there. You don't want these to be too far also. You don't want them to be too far longitudinally away from the engine or else you're gonna make yourself a big diving board that's gonna to wanna to rip off these bolts on the side of the engine. Conversely, you don't wanna to be too close. If you get too close to the center line of the crankshaft, you don't have enough leverage on these motor mounts to hold the motor in place. Basically, the force that the motor exerts against the motor mounts is going to increase as you get closer to the engine, and the force that the motor exerts on the motor mounts will decrease as you get away from the engine. So you gotta find the sweet spot here where you're not making a big moment arm on the block itself, but you're not too close to the crankshaft that the crankshaft is gonna smush the bushings. If you're making a bunch of stuff, try to do them in sets. So you can just drill one hole right through it all and grind them all around together. 
The next step is we want to get the engine sitting exactly where we want it. Now this is going to take some finagling because you need it to sit there without engine mounts. So for us today, we happen to have a nice flat oil pan and a couple pieces of wood and we're mounting it to this, well, just square frame. So it's pretty easy. But uh, in the real world, you may have to make a piece or a little fixture or something to temporarily hold the engine, maybe by some bolt holes on the front of the block or something. For me, I can just put these pieces of wood underneath and it's uh, staying level front to back, side to side. And so we are good. So we got our completed motor mounts welded up, it's cooled off, so now we're going to put it all back together and that'll be our motor mounts. On a normal engine mount system, you may start with a pre-existing set of bolt holes on your K-member. And in that case, you may want to make an extra plate that bolts to that K-member, and that's what you would weld the square tubing to that goes up to the outer sleeve of the bushing. And that way you can remove your whole engine mount system and bolt something else in later if you want. I've been doing this on all of the engine swaps that I've done. They seem to work great. I've even done some drag racing with the hood off just so I can watch the behavior of the motor and you'll see it do a little bit of rocking side to side as it goes through force, but it holds it nicely in place and gives it a little bit of shock absorption still so you don't have lots of road noise or harsh vibrations on the engine itself. Hopefully that gives you guys the confidence to tackle your next engine swap. If you follow these steps, I would say you could confidently and appropriately do a nice set of engine mounts for any engine in any car. That's all for today, guys. As always, go make something, have some fun with your buddies, and go fast. Mm -hmm.